Okay, so why uh, Fisarius Therapeutics? Uh, I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years, uh, starting and raising money and running companies. Uh, I believe in capitalism, making things better, faster, and cheaper. And I want to help people, especially our, our brave war fighters, with the, which the product that uh, we're making at, at Fisarius called Dermosphere will be of great use to the uh, brave war fighters that we have. And uh, my brother and I started the company, and the product is based on his discovery and subsequent invention based on that discovery. My co-founder, who's my brother, has credibility, and I've known him for 50 years. So the problem that we're addressing is full thickness skin loss. Um, so full thickness skin loss uh, is essentially when you lose all layers of your skin, including uh, the dermis. And is there a feedback by any chance? Or does it sound okay? Okay. So the body does not naturally regenerate dermis, and skin grafts alone are suboptimal, and they replace only a fraction of the dermis. So when you lose all of your skin in a, in a traumatic accident, a burn, or actually most commonly uh, as a result of tumor excision, uh, basically the body is not able to regenerate the primary layer of skin, which is dermis. So a surgeon cannot apply epidermis on top of it, or what's called a split thickness graft, without a dermal layer. Otherwise, the epidermal layer will die, as you can see. And that's sort of what happened to this patient here. This is another example. The leading product on the market is called Integra. They sell about $350 million a year of, this, of the dermal regeneration scaffold. So you have a wound here that has no blood supply in it. Integra is applied. And then you can see that there's failure of the Integra here. And the reason for that is the way in which a dermal regeneration scaffold works is cells invade the material and then they form neodermis by, neo, by creating blood vessels. Unfortunately, Integra is the way Integra is constructed if you can see here, there's healthy tissue here. So when Integra is applied, the cells kind of go one flight up. But to, but to, 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 to create dermis here, there's, no, there's nothing underneath. So the cells have to traverse like Batman across the, the surface. And they don't move too fast, especially in the, in the, uh, in the material that Integra is made, how Integra is made. So my brother basically came up with a discovery in trying to make a better uh, dermal regeneration scaffold in addition to being an attending surgeon, reconstructive surgeon at Wild Cornell for the last 12 years, he also founded a laboratory there called the Laboratory of Bioregenerative Medicine and Surgery, where medical students take a year off and work on a thesis that he, hypotheses that he identifies from his experience in the clinic. The biggest problem he had was in reconstructing skin, not having a product that was effective consistently enough. In addition, when Integra does work, it takes 21 to 30 days to be on the patient before you can apply that split thickness graft and move on. So patients with these types of wounds are suffering for a long time. So my brother noticed that when he created a scaffold of a, of a low density bulk material with a higher density uh, bulk collagen microsphere and embedded those things to create essentially this structure, he noticed dramatic, dramatically increased invasion and neovascularization behavior compared to Integra. So as a result of that, we patented, started the company, and we're off to the races. And our, our goal is to uh, be ready to submit 510K uh, application approximately 12 months from today, no later than 12, 31, 2020. So Dermosphere, we've basically been in R&D since, since fourth quarter of 17. We have four employees at Fisarius Therapeutics. Um, we've got 12 months of preclinical data and every, and every trial, and we, everything we do is compared to Integra, and in, in every trial, superior invasion and neovascularization, increased deposition of newly produced collagen, lower inflammatory response, and in our, in our most recent large animal study, you can see that there was better epithelialization and increased uh, dermal deposition. So taken together, they demonstrate that dermosphere heals full thickness wounds, and the market opportunity is large and growing. So in addition to our primary indication, which is acute full thickness loss, so that's, the, that's sort of a sheet product, like a piece of American cheese that you would put on the wound, we, our Dermosphere has shown promise to be used as a, as a filler material, both in terms of wound and cosmetics. So the total potential addressable market is you know, between eight and $15 billion. Um, just to kind of give you that, the proof in the pudding here, so this was our small animal phase that we finished that, that went to our large animal phase, and you can see 
the invasion here that essentially um, you can see that in dermosphere after 14 days in a mouse, the blue dots are cells and you see actual blood vessels functioning, whereas 14 days in Integra, you see very little cell invasion. And I highlight it down here, the yellow are the cells and the circled black dashes are actual functioning blood vessels after 14 days. So we think that in addition to it working in that wound that in the hand that you saw where Integra doesn't, because Integra poses a barrier for cells to move, whereas ours doesn't, we think we can cut down that 21 to 30 days of waiting to seven to 14. So massive saving of suffering and cost. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Questions? Thank you for your presentation. Can you give us an idea of the cost between Dermosphere and Atengra? And also, do you have, uh, I'm going to assume that if this works well, that you're going to save a lot of money on uh, surgeries afterward. Do you have an idea of how much that would save the system? <clears throat> well, the first question, so Integra, uh, basically for an eight by 10 sheet is, is about $6,000. So as we're sort of still on the early stage, I can tell you that we're gonna price our product to be competitive with Integra so that we truly will have a better, faster, cheaper product. Um, these products have 90% gross profit margin associated with them, at least Integra does. So there's, I think, plenty of room to compete on price to get market share initially, especially if we're gonna have significant better e efficacy. So the, the, the second question in terms of the savings to the sort of system, I mean, I haven't, I haven't quantified it yet, but the, but the total, you know, the wound sort of, you, you see numbers bandied about that the sort of cost of, you know, treating wounds is 25 billion. I mean, this is a, there's, a, there's about, as I said, $350 million worth of Integra sold a year. So more or less, you could, you could broaden that to a billion dollars worth of product. And of course, these patients are staying in hospitals. These are like intensive care patients. So if we can reduce the time it takes for that patient to move to the next step by 50%, that's a good number. You know, 50% of what that population is, I don't, I don't have that information, but, but we know whatever it is, we can reduce it by 50%. And then also, more importantly, the wounds where Integra doesn't work. You have complications, you have you know, massive increased costs with those patients that you know, using Dermosphere, that would never happen in, in many cases. On your regulatory pathway, uh, are, you, are they gonna ask for human data? I know you have small animal and, and porcine, sure. but. Yeah, so we, we have a regulatory consultant, his name is Stephen Rhodes. Uh, he was at the FDA for 20 years and, now, and he's been an independent consultant for about 10 or 15. Um, he wrote a, he's he's uh, created and delivered to us a regulatory strategy report where he's, uh, He's basically said explicitly that he sees a 510K pathway uh, without needing human data. And, and this was this, just as an FYI, Stephen was the signing official at the FDA on Integra's 510K uh, appro uh, approval ap application. So, can you just go over? So, what is your IP for? Or what IP do you have currently? Yeah, so the IP is for the. It's, and I have, a, I have a slide of IP I just didn't put in here because of just time constraints. I'm happy to give that to you offline, but it's essentially for uh, the scaffold architecture. So it's, the, it's creating the scaffold with the microspheres into the bulk. It's, it's the method of, of, of making that scaffold. So we have, uh, you know. Is it granted or are you just applied for it? Granted, so we have patents in, uh, we have patents in US, Australia, and Japan just granted, pending in China. Um, EU, Eurozone, and Canada, and Israel. Oh. Um, so I have a question about the origin, but also your go-to-market, and I'm just trying to decide <laughs> so which to ask. So I'm just ask curious, both. how how did you first, how did your brother um, come to the conclusion that this might be something that is worthwhile working on without ever having tested it on like skin uh, per se, in a way that you could show us evidence for? Sure, so, so one of the, my, my last slide, which I'll just kind of kind of cheat a little bit, but basically, so, the, so this, is, this is the uh, first and only pig model we did so far. We actually got an SBR phase one that we're basically gonna complete a three pig model in, in December. But, but this is, this is uh, in, in wounds, the animal model that precedes humans is pig. So once you, you, if anybody wants to see like what's it gonna do in a human, you do a pig model. So what I've circled here, which I'm not gonna go through it, but we outperformed Integra, and this was actually a wound model. So the other, the mice model was a subcutaneous implantation model. This was actually a two by two millimeter excision wound model that we outperformed materially in Integra in, this, in, in, in all the same ways, new collagen epithelialization, 
lower immune response. So um, in terms of what, my, what caused my brother to sort of say, I've got something here. So as I said, he, ran this, he runs this research lab and he had, this, he had his students working on generate a new, you know, we need a better Integra. So they, made, so they made all kinds of scaffolds, you know, and it's kind of like grandma's cookie kitchen, you know, doing things in the lab. And what was interesting is that in one of the scaffolds that they developed, my brother noticed cell, in, cell infiltration very concentrated in certain areas of the scaffold. And then he sort of examined it more and he found that actually what, what, where the infiltration was taking place was around uh, imperfections in the scaffold as a result of the fact that it was made in like grandma's kitchen and not in like the Bisco's factory. And so you had air bubbles and particulate matter that the cells were migrating to. And his theory or his hypothesis was that it was a result of the differential density interface between those, those, piece, those things that were in there and the rest of the, of the mm -hmm. collagen that was at a consistent concentration. And it created a substrate. And, and he, you know, he's, a, he's a research guy, so there's a large school of, re, of thought around cell movement and why cells move. And a lot of it is, there's a school that's, that, that is sort of, you know, studies around cells moving through a density differential interface through, through a substrate. So he felt that was a trigger. And then to systematize those imperfections, he, he came up with spheres and then, you know, embedded the spheres. Okay. Thank you, Brett. Thank you.